Great. It's uh, 2.34 p.m. on the 14th of February. Couldn't get that out there. Uh, we're going to call to order the fiscal subcommittee uh, for the February meeting. This time we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. On to new business. First item uh, for discussion update, FY24 budget overview, Mr. Bowles. Thank you. Um, so I prepared some notes for everybody um, that I, I handed out before we started here. For fiscal year 24, I've just highlighted um, the, the bigger ticket items that I think need some sort of attention as we sort of roll into the end of the year. So at the top, I'm starting with uh, revenues, obviously like the city allocation, state funding, we know what those numbers are for the year. Um, our Medicaid reimbursement is one of the numbers that does fluctuate. And so just wanted to highlight the fact that um, through today, we are through yesterday, we've collected 586K, um, even though for the year we've budgeted 1.6. So as of right now, a little bit under budget in terms of Medicaid reimbursements, but confirmed with our accountant that um, part of this is due to lag time and processing from our Medicaid uh, claims provider, um, as well as uh, some of the, the out-of-district speech pathologist um, TAs haven't been logging their time, and so there's a little bit of catch-up work to be done. So the accountant's confident that we're going to land around that 1.6 million number um, and not necessarily be under budget. But just wanted to highlight it because on the monthly fiscal report that you'll see at the school committee tomorrow night, it is considerably under budget. Uh, I don't, do you want to hit these one by one? Should I go through them? You can give high level if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, for overtime, I feel like we've harped on this the past couple months. Um, we're around where we were last year at the same time, uh, about 310K in expenditures. And last year we ended at 550K. So I think this year, the, which we've, we've mentioned in past meetings, there, there's a need to address the budget for overtime, uh, which was only set at 150K last year. Um, health benefits, uh, we're actually on target as of now to be under budget. Uh, so one of the more silver lining items within the budget right now. We've expensed 8.9 million uh, around the same time last year. We we're about in the same spot and we ended the year at 18.3 million for, for healthcare costs for the district. Um, and we budgeted 20.1. So as long as we stay on sort of the same trend for this year, hopefully we can, we can end up being under budget by a material amount again. Uh, the private pension is something that needs to be discussed during budget season as well. Last year, we budgeted for fiscal year 24 for a million dollars. That's less than the actuarial recommended contribution. So the actuary does a study of um, the, the trending payouts and things like that for the pension and gives us a report annually that tells us what they think we need to contribute in order to maintain the payouts on an annual basis. Um, last year, we budgeted for less than what the actuary's recommended contribution was. The Rhode Island Auditor General uh, stated that they'd like for us to continue to contribute at least the recommended amount. Um, so again, that's something to consider for fiscal year 25 budget is that the budgeted amount is going to be probably closer to 1.8, 1.9 million as opposed to the million that we budgeted last year. You're saying for FY25, we need to have that on our radar at 1.8? Yeah, yeah. Uh, HVAC, just, uh, this isn't gonna be a surprise to anyone, the administration or school committee, but we've had some ongoing HVAC issues at VETS, so we're pretty close to fully expensing the budget for HVAC already for the year. Um, just wanted to call attention to that because we've we've already almost hit the 120k that we budgeted. 
Uh, transportation is something that we're watching closely right now. Um, I've been going back and forth with Carla, our, our transportation director. Um, right now, we've only expensed $4 million uh, through, that's through December. So it doesn't include January invoices, which have yet to be um, processed. But we, we budgeted $11.65 million for the year. Um, so obviously under 50% of budget right now. Um, so we're just gonna, we're going to tally up the the January invoices and they stay on the time just to see where we are through February um, to see if there are some material savings there in transportation mm -hmm. for year. Um, out of district tuitions are relatively on budget, which is good because that's a big item. Electricity with the the use of the net metering credits that the district has, we've been able to stay under budget through. Um, through February, we've only spent 370k of the 1.2 million that we budgeted for the year. So, again, we're hoping to see a couple hundred thousand dollars of savings um, in electricity for fiscal year 24. Uh, technology and software costs, just an item to call out uh, that we've spent close to the full budget, and it's a larger line item, 1.89. Sorry, we charge 1.6. Um, so for the year, we're doing relatively well. Uh, we so far expensed 90.1 90, 90 million dollars of the 185.91 budgeted. So I just got a note there that we've we've spent 48.46 percent of the budget. That's um, through December. That's through January. Through January. Yep. Uh, and at, at the same time last year, we had we had spent about 48.97% of the budget. Uh, so a little less percentage wise of the budget spent through January of 2024. Um, so on, on target to, to run a small surplus again in fiscal year 24 as of now. Great. Any questions for Brandon? Current status of finances against the FY24 budget. Great. Hearing none, next item is discussion update open bids for quotation relative to the FY25 budget. Mr. Bowler. Yeah, so the, the only the only items here are just um, the, the open bid for transportation, which is open through February 20th. So we've got a little less than a week for those bids to come in. There have been three vendors that have been asking questions. Um, so I would anticipate three bids coming in. Um, the uh, as far and as far as any other bids, the the bidders for the Holloman renovation project are the other ones outstanding right now. No other large bid ever open. Are we still entertaining the fact that we might use two different vendors for transit? Yeah, yeah. So part of the transportation bid process is that. Um, the way it's set up right now is that our in-district students, as well as the ones who are going out of district and being bused via statewide, are from the same vendor. Um, part of the RFP that we sent out for transportation was to potentially bifurcate that, and so we have potentially one vendor doing one piece um, and another vendor doing the other piece, just to try to split that up and get the best outcome. For the public's knowledge and our new members' knowledge, the uh, current vendor's first student. The uh, statewide is doing the out of district transportation, correct? Uh, transportation represents our third largest expense. Am I correct with that? It's it's labor benefits and then transportation. That's that, that's correct. Yeah, that basically eats up a majority of the budget. So pretty big bid for us to for this committee to keep an eye on and and for the school committee and the school district as a whole. Any questions, comments for Brandon on item two? Hear none. Uh, discussion update, governor's proposed FY25 education budget. Uh, so I just have a general note here that, that shows what uh, Warwick's fiscal year 25 state aid number is. So um, this year we'll be reading, receiving 46.38 million. Um, that's an increase of about 500K over last year. 
uh, and it's just based on conversations in the General Assembly, I don't think that's likely to be revised upwardly. So I think that's probably the number that we should count on going forward. And there was a uh, chair's dinner the other night. There was a lot of discussion that the, the governor went down on funding of MLLs, mm -hmm. multi-language learners, yeah. um, special education percentage. Uh, that was adjusted and then the uh, scale, right? Yeah. And what we're, what I've been seeing, you know, hop in if you'd like, Lynn, uh, is that it seems like more money is now shifting over to charter schools because they're seeing an increase in enrollment. That fair statement? It's like some charter schools are seeing an increase in enrollment. Yeah. Any questions or comments? For uh, Brandon on the FY uh, on the uh, governor's proposed budget. Right, and last one for you, Brandon. Uh, discussion update: FY twenty five budget preparation. Sure, sure. So um, all budget managers have submitted their initial requests uh, for the non-staffing piece of the budget. Um, again, the staffing piece is going to come a little bit later once everybody's um, plans for school year uh, for the upcoming school year have come in. Um, but the first round of non-staffing requests, we've got requests of 46.78 million compared to uh, fiscal year 24's non-staffing budget of 39.4. So it's almost a 20% increase. This is to be expected. I asked everyone to put forth their ideal plan. So everything that you want for the upcoming year and then it'll get pared down from there based on priorities so not a surprise that it's that much higher but just wanted to put the numbers in front of everyone um and and we're just working now on, on reviewing the detailed budgets to figure out where we can prioritize um uh, and i met with super, assistant superintendent McCaffrey last week just to look at the, the non-staffing requests and the superintendent and I are going to meet this week and then weekly afterward in order to just continue to move that process forward with the the initial budget request should be due to the superintendent on March 5th and I think we're on pace to do that. Great. And so for our new members uh, knowledge and for the public's knowledge back in November uh, the finance subcommittee met and we adjusted our policy on the budget preparation process uh, so now the administration provides the superintendent's recommended budget to the full school committee by april the first and so uh, as finance committee members you guys will also get a copy of that as well um and then you could provide some input and we'll have discussion during the uh, the finance subcommittee meeting that month um and brandon's done a great job uh since coming on this is he's about to finish his first full school year uh, being right, with the yeah. district, right? Yeah, and and he's kind of really helped formalize it. Yeah. You know, the the budget planning process. He's he's taken a little bit of what what they did in the past that was good, and and he's kind of backing into it very nicely. So uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can do in uh, the upcoming budget budget hearing process. Yeah. All right. Next item: discussion action, proposed FY25 budget hearing schedule. Uh, so on this, just to uh, get everybody's input, we'll just do a, a quick you know, vote uh, around the table. Um, what I'm, uh, for your knowledge and for the public's knowledge, what we've done in the past is two hearings, two budget hearings. Um, typically the first present, the, the first hearing is the members of the administration. Um, Ms. Dan Brooks' team will come up, each one of the functional leaders will give, let's say Dr. Taylor will do the IT presentation. Here's what I'm looking to add into my budget this year. Um, and then here's what I need to accomplish. And then we go all the way around. So it'll be, you know, um, the buildings and operations, elementary, high school, or secondary. Uh, and then the second budget hearing occurs. And that's the night where we, uh, you know, if we have to make any cuts, we would perform those cuts at that budget hearing. So I have um, two options. I know you had a concern with the gap. Yeah. So I tried to I tried to close it a little bit. Let me know what your thoughts are, and then we'll put it towards a vote. Yeah. Uh, initially, I had for our budget hearing April the 11th, and then April the 30th. Mr. Uh, Bowl had concerns about the the, the time span between. Uh, I did query my my colleagues on the full school committee, 
and Mr. Test is unavailable uh, the, the 4th and the 5th of April. Um, and we have school vacation April 15th to the 19th. And so if there are administrators that we would have to send emails to and ask questions of, they might not be present. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have ample time to ask the questions to them, review the budget, and then also for them to respond. Uh, so Bryn, with Brandon's concerns on the first budget hearing dates, uh, I've eliminated that. And I'm uh, going to propose two options. Option one would be uh, April the 11th, Thursday, April the 11th for the first budget hearing and Thursday, April 25th for the second budget hearing. So that's option one. And then option two would be Tuesday, April 23rd and Tuesday, April 30th. So that would be a week span. The first option is a two week span as opposed to a three week span. Yeah. Uh, and then option two is a one week span as opposed to a three week span. Before we call a, a vote on it, any concerns with the two options there? I, my, my only um, comment would just be, I think the shorter the lag between the meetings, the better, because it just keeps everything fresh and everybody said, yeah, you know, not everybody's going to memorize the whole budget. So um, I think shorter the period of time between the two sessions, the better. So would you favor option two then? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyone in favor of option one, April the 11th and April 25th? See none. Anyone in favor of option two, April 23rd and April 30th? Let me be All right, great. So there it is. We'll have a school committee meeting on Tuesday, April 9th. That will be the regular school committee meeting on um, the first finances providing the budget. And then we have uh, two school com committee budget hearings on the 23rd and the 30th. Have we heard from the mayor yet on when he wants the proposed budget? Did he stay last year? It was what, May 2nd or 3rd that he was trying for? I think last year it was late in May the 15th, yeah. May 15th, but I haven't heard anything this year. We can ask him in our next meeting. Okay. All right. Next, uh, next item is discussion action. Your COA training for fiscal subcommittee and school committee. I, I put this on here, Brandon, because David um, and I, when we went to the chair's dinner, he, he indicated that um, Ride has a free training and they have the portal online for yeah. you to spin up reports. And, yeah. and he said, um, and, and the individual that was speaking about it at that meeting said it was pretty intriguing. Yeah. Um, it said fairly user friendly after a little while if you, yeah. if you get in it frequently. So I didn't know what your thoughts were. I, I'm looking for your recommendation here as well. Yep. What your thoughts are on, you know, this this committee and, and the school committee voluntarily taking the training if they want to take it. Yeah, there's. I would point them in that direction. Um, there's a lot of information on Rise website related mm -hmm. to it. Um, I think the data portal that you're referring to is. They have a couple. There's one called the UCO and dashboard. And there's another one called the LEA profile. Um, and if I can send the links to everybody on the school committee to those two, those two parts of Ride's website. Um, but it basically takes all of the UCOA data. So UCOA is the chart of accounts that um, schools use in order to submit their financials to the state, uh, and it's very, very specific. Um, so. When we get our, our financials audited, they're they're audited using UCOA as the chart of accounts. We submit it to Ride, and then Ride compiles the UCOA accounts of every district in the state. That way, they can show um, you know what did every district in the state spend on special education, and they but they can narrow it down to such specific details. Um, so there's an actual portal now on Ride's website where you can go and look up really any data point you wanted related to your specific district or urban districts or charter schools um, and it's super user friendly but they do have their own instructions on the website as well so um, i would just point people in the direction of the the ride website to to use the um you go a dashboard but i'll send the links to everybody okay they have them great 
And those are, that's aggregated data against the different metrics? Yeah, yeah. So like you can compare public versus charter. Oh yeah, yeah, you can, you can split it any way you want. Um, it's, I think it's, it's based off of Tableau. Um, so you can even turn it into different graphics and stuff like that. It's pretty impressive. Microsoft AI. Tableau's not uh, Tableau, Tableau's IBM. It's yeah, not, yeah. It's not my <laughs> I'm a Microsoft guy, but yeah, we can we can work with Tableau. All right. Uh, so then we won't. We'll, we'll just have that as a discussion. Brandon will send out the links to us. Um, anyone have any questions or comments on that? I think it's worth putting out there for both the regular full school committee and and the subcommittee. Great. And final item. Uh, discussion action fiscal subcommittee discussion on future agenda items so what I'm really looking for is the team here uh, now that we have two new people we're changing the times we're gonna you know moving forward the next meeting will be at 4 p.m. Uh, so that way it's a little bit later in the day and not as disruptive of you know the, our, our kind volunteers from the community uh, and Mr. Janolfi when he wants to come and hang out at it as well uh, so and then we're gonna try to shift these meetings before the regular full school committee so that way, if you look at the regular full school committee agenda, there's all finance um, uh, purchase recs, and we go line item by line item. If you watch the city council, their finance subcommittee will go through all of those items, and then they submit one packet clean onto the school committee. And so if during the school committee, we would just, as the uh, collective five, vote on that one packet. Uh, or if one of my colleagues says, hey, I would prefer if you remove one item and we discuss that separately, but we can all vote on everything else, that would be what would be ideal. Um, all the items are already pretty much pulled together by Teresa yep. uh, and put into the school committee packet. Yep. Uh, so really what we're trying to do is increase the effectiveness of this committee, the efficiency of this, of this committee and the school committee in general. Um, so with that thought in, in mind, do you have any suggestions on what else that we should be doing from the school finance subcommittee perspective? Uh, I don't have anything specifically. I think I think expediting, not expediting, but including that process here will make this meeting more effective and then make school committee go faster. So I think it's a good recommendation, but I don't have anything else specifically right now. I think this has been a productive meeting in terms of um, just keeping everyone informed as to process for the budget and timing and stuff like that. So I think it's been good in general. No other recommendations right now. Well, do you have anything you want that we would add to the agenda? No, that should be regularly just recurring? Yeah, no. Just focusing on FY25 budget. Sure, yeah. I would just say that um, I think it's an excellent idea to streamline. Mm -hmm. Um, the purchasing, I think that at the regular meetings, regular school committee meetings, it takes just a tremendous amount of time. It makes a long night for the community members that are there to, to view that meeting. Um, I would just think, you know, just ask that we think also logistically of our colleagues here in this department, would they come and present to this, you know, committee Excellent. in preparation and, and just at the timing of those meetings it might work for one, two, three, but you have you know, 12 different people that presented every school committee meeting for different purchases and requisitions. We would just want to be mindful of their calendars and times as well. So we'll still have to figure out those logistics. Yeah, that's correct. a good point. Yeah. Anything you think we should add? No, I think that's good. I, I, I had mentioned before, um, this is in line with a similar process we used to have in the past. In the past, you know, the budget preparation process was so um, detail focus, which it should be, so that way when people are looking at the budget, they can see exactly where that money is going. But it was always the case that in the past, when the budget was approved by the school committee in whole back, let's say, in March or April of every year, that that gave us the green light that we needed to, to go forth and purchase the item. So I think um, the more detailed we are in the budget preparation process, that we know exactly where those monies are going, combined with a final check off, let's say, from a subcommittee like this would even make it more palatable, I think, for your colleagues on the full committee as well as the community to know we've had two check points yeah. before that packet is approved in mass. Yeah. I think it'd be good. Great. Uh, do you think we should add like a UCOA dashboard line item on here? I saw they ran one up for, uh, they did like a four slide thing for Barrington. Yeah. Um, or do you think you see no benefit in this meeting to us having something like that? Uh, so it's based on audited financials. Um, so the data is always going to be as of the last 
submission of your audited financials. And so right now we're still looking at fiscal year 22 data in the dashboard. Um, fiscal year 23 should be wrapped up by the end of this month. So we can look at it then, like after the data has been refreshed on RIDE's dashboard. Um, but I don't think looking at it like weekly or anything like that helps. Okay. Because they only get the, the data annually. Okay, great. Ray, do you have anything you think we should add into this to kind of strengthen it? Nope. Chris, anything Curious to add about the UCOA stuff, but uh, right now, no. Okay. All right. And Brandon, I have that as an action and we'll send us out that, that link on yep. the uh, ride page. So. Yep. All right. Next item up for, uh, on the agenda is public comment. Individual comments will be respectfully limited to three minutes per person <laughs> with public comment, not to exceed 45 minutes. No, the content of the comments will not be restricted. It's the hope of this committee that citizens, committee members, and the administration alike will be respectful of each, um, each other's right to speak, tolerant of different viewpoints, and mindful of everyone's time. Are there any comments from any member of the public? Since I'm the only one, no. Adam, do you have anything? I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> right. I'm here observing. <laughs> All right, great. And our next meeting will be Monday, March 11th, 2024, mm -hmm. at 4 p.m. Eastern here at the same location. At this time, I make a motion. Uh, I'm looking for an emotion, a motion to adjourn. Okay, is there a second? Second. There we go. We now adjourn. 3 p.m.